Well, today, Baptism Sunday, hallelujah, we're going to spend some time talking about water baptism this morning, and we have a number of people that are getting baptized. If you haven't been baptized, you didn't sign up, but after this morning, uh, you, you're at the point where you're saying, well, I, I, I want to get baptized, and if you came in here and you're not saved, you haven't believed on the Lord Jesus, but you, by the end of it, you, you, we'll give you an opportunity to be saved, uh, good day to get baptized. You know, it's all set up. You don't have to wait. So uh, you just come on with us this evening. I guess this evening, afternoon, 5 o'clock, I guess it's evening, but, you know, later today. So I'm just going to spend some time talking about water baptism, you know, the significance, what it means, what it doesn't mean, and um, just go from there. Harry A. Ironside said this concerning water baptism. He said, it says, to the lover of the Lord Jesus Christ, there can be nothing legal about baptism. It is simply the, grad, the glad expression of a grateful heart recognizing its identity with Christ in death, burial, and resurrection. Many of us look back to the moment when we were thus baptized as one of the most precious experiences that we have ever known. And so, I uh, mentioned this when we were taking communion. Uh, Baptism, water baptism is an ordinance of the church. What's an ordinance? It's an outward rite or symbolic observ observance commanded by Jesus Christ, which sets forth essential Christian truth. So there are two ordinances that we have in the uh, New Covenant, and that is water baptism and communion. So we're going to be talking about communion today. So just going through some truths about this, Jesus... Uh, set the example of water baptism by being baptized by John the Baptist. So let's go ahead and look at Matthew 3.13. We're going to look at a number of scriptures this morning. Hope that's okay. Amen. Yes. Hey, man, we always look at a lot of scripture. But they, we're just going to go through what the scripture has to say about this. Because, you know, uh, people have all kinds of ideas about water baptism. Uh, small wars have been fought over the formula of water baptism. You know, we dunk, you not dunk, you sprinkle it. Okay, so we'll look at what the Bible says, all right? It's, it's not a religious exercise. We'll see. It doesn't get you saved. doesn't make you any holier. might get you cleaner, depending on how you go up to the ocean, but it's not going to get you any holier. Matthew 3, verse 13 says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to them, Permit it to be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus himself was water baptized. Jesus made it clear that believers were to be baptized in the Great Commission. So you have to understand the word baptize, it's literally, it's a great, it's a, it's a transliteration of a Greek word that means to dunk. So baptize is not a translation, it's like uh, moving the Greek word um, over into English and just pronouncing it in English. So there are, um, when we're talking about baptize, there is water baptism, there also is baptizing, you dunked, immersed into the body of Christ. Okay, so not every word where it says baptize it throughout the New Testament is meaning water baptism. You've got to go by the context. And so, you know, these things you could apply multiple ways. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go therefore and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age." Amen. So Jesus said, go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Of course, they're, they're going to be in the family of God then, but also there is uh, water baptism. We'll see this in multiple examples, so it's twofold. Mark uh, 16, verse 15 says, He said to them, Jesus, go into all, world, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. So he who believes and is baptized, you're going to be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. So Peter repeated the command to be baptized on the day of Pentecost. We look at Acts 2, verse 38. Acts 
It says, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 41, Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. So these people were, were actually water baptized Apparently it says they received his word. So the, the, the fundamental thing is you're receiving the word of God. You're believing what Jesus uh, has done on the cross. And so that is the primary thing. Then baptizing, as we'll see, that's a symbol of what's happened uh, inwardly. The apostles baptized converts throughout the book of Acts. We're going to read uh, a number of scriptures here. Acts 8 verse 12. I'll say this again, you know, all the scriptures, when we, all these scriptures we go through, if you go to our website, uh, once, um, you know, the edited version of the message is posted on our website under media, on the current media, if you click on any message, then they're in two formats, there it says downloads, and you can, in PDF and in Word, Microsoft Word format, you can download all the scriptures we use. So it's good to take notes and everything, just letting you know, like, uh, all the scriptures just... Uh, not just the scripture references, but the entire scriptures in the versions we use them are all available there, uh, you know, for your convenience. Uh, Acts 8 verse 12 says, But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. So you see both men and women were baptized. Uh, this man Simon believed he was baptized and, consent, and continued with Philip. In Acts 10 uh, verse 46, it says, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. You know, so this place, G Peter is preaching the gospel. He didn't even lay hands on them or, or anything, and they just started praying in other tongues, speaking in tongues. Nobody told them to. Nobody helped them. And magnify God. Then Peter answered and said, Can anyone forbid water? Now he's talking about water baptism. That these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And they asked him to stay a few days. So these people were just born again. And now they're being water baptized. And then in Acts 8.36... It says, now they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch, or as they, as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, see, here is water, what hinders me from being baptized? So uh, Philip had been discussing Jesus with this man, had just, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, and this man's believing, and then he says, hey, there's water, you know, can I be baptized? Verse 37, Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. Both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So you see a number of examples here in the Acts. We're going to talk more about the spiritual significance of baptism in the epistles. We're going to do that uh, a little bit, in a little bit here. But next point is that baptism does not save you. Okay, so we see the examples of baptism. We clearly see Jesus uh, was baptized. We see that he told believers to go baptize. We see over and over examples of people being baptized. We need to understand, though, that it does not save you. To, to some people, that's obvious. To other people, they, they believe that if you're not baptized, and if you're not baptized their way by certain people, you're not saved. Okay? That's extreme, and that's not biblical. That's why we're going over it. We need to understand why we do these things. It says we do... Uh, I'll read the scripture in a second. But we don't believe water baptism saves a person. It transforms him or, or transforms him from spiritual death to spiritual life or changes your behavior. So today, those of you that being, you're being baptized, it's an experience, but it doesn't in itself change you. It doesn't change your behavior. It's not a 
You know, it's not a magic incantation something. It is, it is a symbol, an outward symbol of an inward truth. We are saved by our faith in what Jesus did for us, not anything that we can do ourselves. That's how you're saved. I'm going to read scripture to that effect. You don't, you don't go get baptized and that saves you or makes you a better person. It doesn't magically change you into something else. It, things can happen just like they can at all. You know, I've heard of people uh, you know, getting born again and delivered from things in a single service and you know, they had an addiction and they never have it again. That could happen and it, the, the starting point could be when you're baptized, but that's not, that, that could happen, but it's not uh, something that you can bank on. It's not in the Bible. It, in baptism itself doesn't do that. So we are saved by our faith in the Lord Jesus and not in anything he does that we do for ourselves. Look at Romans uh, 3.27. It says, Where is boasting then? Is it, it is excluded by what law of works? No, but by the law of faith. So we don't... It's, it's, uh, it's not by your works. It's by the law of faith that you're saved. We see this in the next verse, Galatians 2.16. I know I'm just going a little bit different today because we're just going through just a number of scriptures on these different things, uh, just kind of teaching on this uh, line upon line. Not so much preaching. Galatians 2.16 says, Knowing that a man is justified or is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. That word justified means acquitted or declared not guilty. So by the works of the law, no flesh or no person's going to be acquitted or declared not guilty. Go back to the beginning of the verse. A man is not justified by the works of the law. So you're not acquitted by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, there's nothing you can do to, so that God says, all right, that's good. You're not guilty. You earned it. Good job. That's, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you're acquitted, you're justified, you're declared not guilty in the court of of the universe in the court of heaven by faith in Jesus, by believing what he did. So he, Jesus, was the sacrifice, was the payment for all mankind to be rescued from the, the trap and the ownership of Satan. We were slaves. We were servants. We, we had a bad father, Satan, because he... The Bible calls us children of the devil without be Jesus. And we are in that family, and Jesus came and walked perfectly. The Son of the living God, God sent him, 100% God, 100% man, walk the earth without sin so that he could face what we face, yet without sin. And because of that, he was able to do what Adam could not do. And so by believing on him, he paid the price for us to be right by believing that he is the ransom, by believing what God said about him, that's how you are declared not guilty. So it'd be like if somebody paid a huge debt that you owed, you know, let's say they paid, you know, something you owed several hundred thousand dollars and they made the payment for you and let's say they made that payment for everybody around. Let's say the whole town or the whole state of Massachusetts, or wherever you're from. But you didn't know about it, but they did it. But the only way you could actually happen, so they, they made the ability to be, the thing to be paid off, but for you to take advantage of it, you had to do something, you had to show up and receive it. Well, number one, you got to find out about it. I know, that sounds contrived, like who would do that and not tell everybody about it? 
it happens all the time. There's stuff, you get these mail, things in the mail. Well, you know, there's class action lawsuits all the time. You're, you're part of this. Oh, really? I can get 45 cents if I go through all this. You're like, what do you say? I know about it, not worth my time. Trash, recycling, whatever. Now, you're talking about a couple hundred thousand dollars. I don't know, maybe, maybe you're at a different place. But for most people, that matters. And so you find out about it. Now you got to do something. It says you must show up at cer certain cer place, declare that you want that. Well, I'm there. Yeah. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to be like, well, I don't care. 45 cents, okay. I mean, it's, I'm going to spend that more effort trying to get that 45 cents and gas. I mean, gas. I drive down the street. I've, I've blown through that. No. So, but if it's a, it's, it's a more money, I, okay, maybe I'm going to go do that. Well, I have to show up and I have to say, I accept it. So that is what Jesus did. Jesus, the son of God, he didn't do this under a rock. The world knew. People were witnesses. He said, go tell everybody about this. Advertise. This has happened. He paid the price so everybody could be acquitted, but... We have to show up and say, I believe that. I accept what you did. In other words, I believe what you did is actually the payment for me to be right with God. If you say, I don't really believe it, that's like saying, I don't really believe that somebody paid it off. I'm not going down there. Do without. So we have to, we are acquitted by believing. We're not acquitted by what we do. And see, that, that hits the religious mind upside the head. Because people want to say, no, it was what I did. I'm a good person. I'm a better person than this person. I'm a good person than all those people. Number one, probably pride and some misunderstanding. But number two, if, if we're looking at other people and go, man, I'm, I'm holier, I live holier life than all those people that go to that church. Maybe. But that doesn't get you, that, that doesn't pay the price. So what do we have to do? We have to come and bow the knee and say, I believe Jesus. He's Lord, and he paid for my acquittal. I believe that. Now in the court of heaven, you've received something, and the court of heaven says, you're not guilty. Why? Because what you didn't know, you accepted the payment. And so that's it. We, we, that is how we become born again. So you say, well, you don't deserve that. Exactly. Exactly. None of us deserve it. If we think we deserve it, we're misunderstanding anyway. Every one of us has sinned and fallen short of the, the glory of God, the Bible says. And so we have to have a Savior. So here, verse 16, Galatians says, A man is not justified, not declared righteous, not declared not guilty, but not acquitted by the works of the law or by what you do, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we may be justified or acquitted by faith. That's how you are. So we say all this to say uh, water baptism is not a thing then. Well, it doesn't matter what you do except water baptism. Now that saves you. See, that's in the same category. And people, religion makes up a whole list of things that you should do or not do, and then that somehow gets you closer to God. Well, you can walk close to God because that doesn't clutter, but it doesn't save you. So Romans 10, verse 8, it says, What does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9, That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So verse 9 says, if you confess or declare, this is not a religious term. This is really simple. Let's look at this. It, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is telling us exactly how to be saved. What's it saying? We were under the lordship of Satan. What it's saying is you, a person, you declare it for yourself saying, I believe on Jesus. 
He is the way. He is the only way. I, with my authority as the, my, of my life, I'm saying I am out of the authority of Satan and I believe on Jesus and I'm rescued into the family of God. And the Bible says if you believe in your heart, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you declare that, you will be saved. See, that's not secondary, that's primary because you're declaring that you're free. It's a legal thing. You can't be like, well, I, he'll declare it for me. No, no. It's like you signing your mortgage or signing, you know, off on a contract. You have to do it. And you do that with your mouth. You say, I believe Jesus. And at that point, you, you believe with your heart. You declare it. That translates you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Satan has no legal authority over you any longer. And that's not just to be saved, that's to walk through the earth then. You're free. And so then when Satan tries to put his hands on you and tries to put on you anything that you, you used to be subject to because you're under his kingdom, oh no, I'm under the kingdom of Almighty God but through the blood of Jesus, you have no authority. So we do the same thing. That's how we maintain, that's how we walk in this earth, is we declare what God has done and say, no, I am free. And Satan will try to push on you say, oh, no, you're not. Look. Look at what's going on. No, you, and he'll try to, what is he trying to do? Get you to agree with him because it's legally putting you back under him. But if you just hold the line and say, no, I believe what God has done. He's done it. That's it. I have it. That's the same way that we receive anything from God. Here it says, verse 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's the same way you receive anything from God. With the heart, you believe unto righteousness. You believe unto uh, health and wholeness. You believe unto financial uh, supply. You believe what God has said. And you, it says you believe, and then with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You declare. So you can't just say, well, I believe, but then constantly be legally declaring the opposite. You can't say, well, okay, well, I believe, but why is this happening? Why is this happening? I don't know. I, and you're declaring, you're declaring that you are actually still under the authority of Satan. But here it's saying that this is how we become saved. So under, notice it doesn't say anything about water baptism here. That's the point. Water baptism does not save you. We need to be fully solid on that, that it is... Uh, only through faith in the Lord Jesus that we're saved. Amen. Let's go, um, let's go to 1 Peter 3, 1. So water baptism then is a symbol. We know we've seen examples of it. We know that um, we're not saved by it. So what is it then? It's a symbol. It's an ordinance. It's a symbol an outward symbol of an inward work. In, uh, go to 1 Peter 3, verse 21. It says, There is also an antitype which now saves us. Baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Look at this in the Amplified Classic. It says, And baptism, which is a figure of their deliverance, does also now save. Now saving, note, notice what it says, from inward questionings and fears, not by the removing of outward body filth. It's not talking about the outward. But by providing you with the answer of a good and clear conscience, inward cleanness and peace before God, because you are demonstrating what you believe to be yours through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In other words, you're demonstrating what God has already done. We know how we're saved, and you have to take the Bible all together and make it reconcile with itself. You don't take one verse in isolation. So we know how we're saved. So we are then water baptized as a symbol of what has already happened on the inside, declaring what Jesus has done, but showing it externally. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 
See, when you're born again, you become a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So when, you be, when you're born again, everything that you were is passed away and everything uh, that God has done in you is new. You become a new person on the inside, but you don't become a new person on the outside. Your mind isn't new. So we are a three-part person, spirit, soul, and body. Our spirit is the real us. Our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. Our body, well, we know our body. And so when you're born again, your body is the same. It doesn't get born again. It's the same. So, you know, you have brown hair before. Uh, you got born again, you still have brown hair. You have blue eyes, you have blue eyes. And your mind doesn't change immediately. You have to do something with your mind. You have to renew your mind. What do you renew your mind with? The Word of God. You, you look at what the Word says and you agree with what the Word says. So baptism doesn't change your body. Like I said, you might remove some dirt, but you come up, you're the same. You didn't become a different person. It didn't erase your mind. Your spirit has already been born again. So if you if you've already believed on the Lord Jesus then your spirit is already been born again. So that's the part that's made new, and that's the part that it's a symbol of, of what happened in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. See, he was crucified, he was buried, and then he rose from the dead. So when you're, when you're baptized, you're identifying with what Jesus did. When you go under the water, that's the old man being buried with Christ. The old you is gone. And when you come up, it's the new you on the inside that was created a new person through Christ Jesus. And now you identify with Jesus in your resurrection. You coming out is a symbol, coming out of the water is a symbol of who you are through Jesus because of believing on him. And it's a new, you're a new person. But you physically coming out of the water didn't make you new. You physically coming out of the water is an awesome visual representation of what happened on the inside. Colossians 2 verse 11. See, water baptism is a public declaration of your faith in Jesus. And let me say this before I go to uh, Colossians. The symbolism of water baptism can simply be stated as an outward demonstration of an inward regeneration or an outward testimony of one's inward faith. Look at Colossians 2 verse 11. It says, In him you were also circumcised, circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Verse 12, buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. So notice it says that... Uh, verse 12, you were buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. So you're identifying with what Jesus did. Romans 6 verse 1. Romans 6 verse 1 says, What shall we say then? We sh shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of you as you were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life. So this is giving us a vivid picture here of what we just talked about. Verse 2, let's read verse 2 through 4. It says, certainly not, referring to, shall we, let's just read verse 1. Shall we say, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? 
Verse 2, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or how do you, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. So in baptism, we're buried with him. We're identified with him in death that just as Christ Jesus was raised from the dead, like you coming out of the water, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So this is given the picture of baptism, but I also want you to notice what it's saying here and emphasize something in verse 4. Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should also walk in newness of life. It's a picture of you being set free with what, we, what happened in the Lord Jesus when we, when we died with him, when we were raised with him, we were set free. So this is saying just as when we come up from the water, we are clean here it's saying we should walk in newness of life. So it doesn't, baptism does not save you, but it's a symbol of what has happened uh, spiritually. And with that, we ought to, as we go forward, we ought to live right. Just like when we're clean, when we come out of bap at baptism, we are clean, actually being born again, and we ought to live right. We ought to live a newness of life. In other words, we ought to live according to the inward man. The part that's been born again, we ought to live in, in um, tandem with that inward person, and we don't give in to things that we used to do. But baptism doesn't make that happen. Baptism is a symbol of what has happened, but it's up to us to walk in it. It's up to us then to say, I'm a new person. I, I, don't, I don't have to do those old things. I don't have to identify with my flesh. Yeah, my flesh wants to do stuff, but I, I don't yield to it. I yield to God. I am a child of God. I have been made clean in Him. I've been declared equip, acquitted. So those things that I used to do are beneath me. They, 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 they're not something that, befit, that, that is fitting for me. I, I don't go that way. I say, no, I'm going to walk according to the inward man. And so it's a, baptism is an outward symbol of the break that you've made internally. One more, we're going to read this last verse. Ephesians 2 verse 4. <clears throat> it says, But God, who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive with, together with Christ. The, by grace you have been saved and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See, this is what happened. This is a picture, uh, an illustration of what happened for us in the Spirit, and baptism shows that. We've been raised up to sit together with Jesus. So that's our new nature. Verse 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in, in Christ Jesus, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in Him. So baptism uh, is a symbol of what's happened on the inward uh, man, and so then we identify with that. We say, I am now, I've been born again. I am now able to work or to walk in all that God planned for me to walk in. Now I have the ability to do it. I might have wanted to be a good person before. I might have wanted to do the right things before. But now I have the ability to do it because God has made me new on the inside. And if I agree with that new person on the inside, then I can walk according to what he has said to do. I can walk in newness of life. I can walk according to the good works that he's planned for me before I was ever born. 
it's a beautiful uh, illustration of what happens to the born-again believer. When you see that person go down, that old person represented going down under that water, you can't see them for a moment, they're gone, but then they come back up, and when they come back up, they're new in God, they're able to walk out the plan of God for their life, they're able to walk out His plan and purpose and walk according to the inward person. Amen? So that's what we're doing today, this afternoon. It's not a religious ritual. It's, it's showing, if you could see into the spirit realm, what happened to all these people when they trusted the Lord Jesus. That's what we're seeing today through this symbolic uh, representation. Praise God.